Warning, graphic pest control video ahead. Do not watch if you might be offended. If, however, you really like watching pest control videos, then hello again and welcome to the Squirrel Hunter channel. Please continue and watch us as we control pest populations with silenced air rifles here in the UK. If you have any questions, can you please check the description below first to see if it's already been answered and for some useful links. Thank you. As you can see from the date, it's the end of 2017, December the 9th, bros out for a solo mission. It's one of our favourite feeders. It's going out for first light. Still pretty dark, but he hopes to be in the hide and set up. From then turns up, it's a cold day, you can see. Snow on the hills, I do believe. Certainly frosted down on the ground, on the lower levels of the valley floor. Puddles are all freezing, ground's rock solid. Crunchy underfoot. Bro normally parks by the road and walks up. So I'll normally drive up in my 4x4. He's in the high, he's taking his test shot. This feeder has been very productive over the years. It's a big feeder, tucked away in the woods, big for a reason, so you can pretty much leave it unattended for a few weeks at a time without fear of it going empty. More cost effective on the diesel, and hopefully quite a few squirrels have found it when you come to shoot, and you get to shoot a load of them. This is number one for the day. For some reason it's not coming to feed up a tree just to be awkward. You'd have thought that would have come straight in on the feeder, wouldn't you? Disappeared from view completely. No reason behind it. There's no natural food around. Ground's too hard to dig up to find any buried food. Very strange indeed. And annoying. Never mind, it's early doors still. Here we go. Maybe that's the same squirrel coming back. This is more like it. All the hallmarks of a squirrel coming to feed. And for some reason, it legs it off. No joy there. So bros reduced to filming the wild birds, foraging under the leaves. And that's pretty much the end of his session, unfortunately. And these days do happen. This is Bro's Day State Harrier X, topped off with the Hawk Sport HD 4 to 12 by 50 scope. We're launching his favourite parapel pellets from it. Bro's definition of persevere is to go away and come back in just under a month's time from the last time. We cut straight to the chase. We've got a great big fat squirrel. Sat on the feeder. Looks like it's clocked bro move at some point. It's gone on alert. And moving he most certainly is. Lifted the rifle up, he's got the illuminated reticule on the halt scope, lining up for a headshot. As soon as he gets the opportunity, he'll take it and watch what happens here. Lines up, and just as he commits to take the shot, the squirrel turns to the left. You'll just see it shuffle up the right hand side of the tree if you were being observant. We've cut the bad language out. You can see that's the point he was aiming as he pulled the trigger. Then he went and did this. Moved to there. Now he's going out to look for it. Luckily, it's dropped dead in the road. That is precisely why we like for them to sit still, maybe have a couple of goes at eating. So we get into a rhythm. Doesn't happen often. A lot of times you'll miss them from the head movement, but on that occasion, the head movement went the other way. Luckily enough, the pellet stopped it. That's another good reason to use a decent hunting pellet. I'll show you later, it's dead in a road. Another reason why we'd rather go for a head shot, if it's sat nice and still, than a body shot. If that had got down a rabbit hole, nobody in their right minds could stick their hands down there or a rat hole to try and retrieve it, not knowing it's dead or not. Anyway. Bro's done a few more zero shots. It's difficult to sell at the time that it was head movement. And then you've seen the video footage, you know exactly what happened. He does a bit of a necropsy in a bit to see where the pellet went. He's happy enough that 
rifles on target. Wait for this one a lot longer. There we go. Gauge the movement of the squirrel, how long it's likely to stay. See the body stoppers pretty much collapsed at the back there. The squirrel dropped down in the sight, which is not ideal. That's caught under the tin. That one's dead. So there's two on the deck now, because the pheasant comes in. That's a bit of a mooch. Stalks off to the right. Fed enough of the red reticule by the look of it. So to go green. It didn't give me any main cam footage of this one. So I just have to have the scope cam instead. Maybe a good idea how difficult it is sometimes to track a squirrel. There we go. Wants it to become still, and that would do. As soon as the crosshairs were on, he let rip. Fair play to him. Three on the deck. There's Mojo back after the first one. As I said before, it doesn't happen that often. When you commit to the shot, you can get those head movements. It's too late then. But your brain's already told the finger to squeeze the trigger. And that's the first one he shot. Albeit an accidental body shot, it did work. But not before the squirrel got some distance. He doesn't know that at this point in time. He's got three on the deck, which is better than last time. He's going to take it home now. And do his own little investigation as to where the shot went. Warning! Necropsy ahead. Do not watch if necropsies might offend you. If not, then keep watching and see what the pellet did. It looks like his wife's kicked him out in the garden. Chopped the squirrel about. Trying to look for where the pellet might have gone in. Sometimes it's pretty obvious, other times it's not. He's looking on the wrong side there. It's easy to see with the footage. You can see where the crosshairs were on its shoulder. It's right shoulder as we're looking at it, it's looking at the wrong side. He doesn't know that, he's trying to find out where the pellet went. Not being very obvious, is it? Not a lot of blood come out the hole. We're back on the wrong side again. Not sure if you can feel any damage that side. It's peeled it open now. You can see where the site of the entry wound was, which is pretty much exactly where the crosshairs were as the squirrel turned its head. Quite fortunate with that. Looks like two wound holes there, but I don't think it was shot twice. It was shot exactly once. So whether it pinched the skin, I don't know. Well, myself and bro have been out today to do a bit of feeder maintenance. I'm just about to go and turn my car around. Bro's just filming the woodland. Pretty much all pine around the hide and behind. A few deciduous trees in front. That's pretty much where all the squirrels come from. Down that bank. Keep me to put a camera there catch their approach. Maybe we'll get round to it one day. That's where the majority come from anyway. Sometimes we think they come over the trees and maybe then tree trunk. Okay, let me start my car up. So let me turn it round. What we've done here is come out and check the feeder levels. It's stood up the body stoppers. Try and make a better job of stopping them going down the bank when they kick. But it really does need a lot more work than that. You can see our handy work. Body stopper up in the air. Not laid down. Hopefully you're going to catch this squirrel when it hits the ground. 
as long as Bro shoots it properly. Same gear as last time for Bro. Looks like that feed is listing to the left. There's a bit of an old age pensioner of a feeder. Probably best part of 15 years old. Bro's got the scope come on. This one's gone into a feeding pan straight away. Straight on head shot beckons, holds the crosshairs where it's set comfortably. There we go. Bro has to crack the camera after almost kicking it over as he slips with his rifle. That was kicked out from under the feeder into full view, fortunately. Still a bit of a dip under the feeder. And kick into that. Difficult to see them. Give them a potential victim. Are you the one on the floor? Not for long. Straight onto the feeder leg. And up to feed. Just what we want. We're just going to find it now in the crosshairs. And there it is. Red reticule being the favourite today. These little head movements. There's absolutely no benefit in shooting this any quicker than he does. Usually sit there on wheat and feed for quite a few minutes. They don't tend to run off with it generally. I've seen maybe one or two do that over the years, but the vast majority will sit there and munch. So you should have plenty of time to take the shot. That's better. That's what we wanted to see. Still eyeballing the one on the floor, I think. So he's got some sort of light patch on his forehead. Probably just waiting for it to get in a decent feeding pattern before he pounces. Knows roughly where the head should be when it sits back. That's what he's aiming for, or waiting for even. There we go. Even better. That's a good kick about. That's wrong with that shot though. Did enough damage. Kill it with one shot. Never knew what hit it. Still bopping around. There he goes. It's come to a halt there. The system is shut down. Another likely victim. Investigation ensues. Gotta check them both out, It'd be rude not to, I suppose. Both definitely dead. Tail pulling. No, it's not going to wake up and play. Best go for breakfast, eh? Definitely see the lean on that feeder now.
half rotten. It's only the armoury that's keeping it together. Where's it going? Onto the roof, down the back. It's hard to tell at the time where it's gone to. I do believe they've chewed another hole in the back of the feeder. It's like Bro's best efforts to block it off. I think the rats might be helping as well. Then getting inside and feeding at a sight. It's very annoying. Bro hasn't figured it out yet where it's gone. His eyes flick backwards forward to the feeder, to the camera. Try and take it all in. It's difficult sometimes. It's easy when the camera has captured everything to go back and review it. Surprising what you see that you missed when you watch the footage. I imagine he's sat there waiting for it to appear again. Here comes another squirrel. So now we've got one on the branch, one in the back of that feeder. What's going to happen here? The other one appears just briefly at the back. A bit of a chase ensues. They're acutely aware when other squirrels turn up. The bros actually heard them growling at each other, believe it or not. A very strange sound, he said. So imagine they're tuned in to listen for each other. They don't seem to be chasing that hard though. Both coming in to feed. Possibly. See, they've already gone in a feeder. Guessing it probably has. And that'll do if it sits up on top of there. Seems to have gone on a lyric now. That'll do. Just line up. Take the shot. that circle there. This by magic it one appears to see what's going on. Definitely a hole in the back of that feeder. You still managed to bag one of the two. I think you got caught on the body stopper or did it drop over the back? Here we go. No, gone straight back in the hole. Well, that's no good to anybody. At this point, I think he sussed out what's been going on. That one just popped back out of the feeder. Will it stay there? Nope. It's going to go somewhere else. Tail flicking away. Sure, what he's looking at. It disappears from view. That's pretty annoying, isn't it? Been a running battle with these squirrels, trying to keep them at the back of that feeder. Here it comes again, goes back in again. Assuming it's the same squirrel that is. Might be a different one, but I doubt it. I think it's the same one. Once they get a taste for going inside in the dark, munching away, nice and safe. This bro just shooting at the feeder, trying to get it to come out. Doesn't seem to want to.
giving up now. Thoroughly annoyed. That's the first one, I think. One did drop over the side. Landed in the puddle. You can see the rainfall we've been having. Just the three. The three is better than none. A we'll quick look inside of the feeder. Attempts to block it up with sticks. You can see the mould. Might come out with him another day. Start taking measurements. Get a rough idea of the size of this feeder. We'll make one of a similar size. We're made out of new wood. And I'm going to armour it to death to stop them getting in the back. It's a general idea anyway. Give an idea how far off the ground it's going to be. About 18 months, two years before this, I managed to squirrel myself away a bit of old packing crate material. It's been stuck in my shed for ages now, taken up room, and now I've brought it out into the open and sawed it up to make a replacement feeder for Old Faithful. You can see that bit of board in the bottom is a bit of backboard out of an old wardrobe. Still got that kicking about. It's a double hopper design. Very often get twos and threes come to this feeder. My normal construction technique is to panel pin the sides and run construction adhesive around the corners, which tends to make it quite strong internally. I've used a bit of cardboard to make a triangular template. I've just extrapolated the angles to make the triangle, and then used that to cut the bits of hardboard to make that little splitter in the bottom and glued it all in place. So the wheat should pour down in there, come out the two holes in the bottom corners where the hoppers are. I've made a little stand to support it, take the weight, and I can attach it in place of the old one. You can see the body stoppers have been collapsed, undermined by rats, and myself and Bro have come out this day. We're not leaving until that old feeder has been replaced with a new one. We just arrived. Bro's taken a look inside. Absolutely wrecked, isn't it? Holes up the back. We pulled it off the tree. Just got to drag it out the way. That's what we were contending with. Every time you blocked up a hole, it would eat more out. So what we've done now is we've levelled it out a bit. Just checked to see where the body stop would go, then removed it again. So we can attach the feeder in position correctly. And the rats have managed to mine most of the dirt down the bank. So we reattached the body stopper and we've also chucked all the dirt in the base to level it all out. That was all dug out by the rats. All that remains is to come and shoot it. And Bro has decided, because I spent so much time building the feeder, he's going to let me have first go on it. Cheers, mate. We'll see the time of year by the date. All wandering out. For a session where he's going to film, and so am I. Let's see how many we get on the new feeder. Can't remember what time of the day it is. We just ate first light. Quite dark in the woods. We only tend to get up early like this in the winter. In the summer, I don't tend to bother. Let's see the glint of my lovely flask shining away, full of. Hot sweet tea, well not that sweet actually. I should be using my FAC Rapid in 2.0 calibre. I'll be launching JSB Exacts. At any squirrels that are misfortunate enough to sit in front of me. You can see that's a, I think it was a 10 shot group from memory. About 15 yards. I know they're on the money. Here's our first victim coming from the right as they often do. This feeder now it's got a few more features than previously. It's got rain stoppers over the tops of the hoppers. It's also got a felted roof. Try and keep the water off. Not that the squirrels will appreciate it. It's all about the longevity of the feeder. Going to be out here in all weathers. The last one held up for a number of years. We had to do a lot of remediation to it keep it that way. Eventually it was beyond economical repair. Bro's got an idea to take it back and salvage what we can off of it. It's mainly the back got rotted through and he's adamant that the sides and the front are good enough. 
well certainly the sides are from memory the front was pretty much ragged by the squirrels and rats and had to be armoured to the point where they couldn't get in if there's any salvageable material we'll have it out we needed to build yet another feeder waste not want not a eh? rather annoyingly so it's going to sit on the top of there which is not what I want I think I'll just wait for it to drop down that's more like it it's coming in from the right and there's a little left hand side of the feeder it's got to figure it out to open up the lid not difficult is it shot to the head trying to find it on the floor and that's not good is it that's the sort of movement that indicates a bad shot don't know what happened there second shot required as soon as I got the opportunity I shot it this is a thing about headshots they don't tend to go too far but to me that should have been just a bit left my fault I say I'm back to waiting again with a rapid at the side. Sniper cam on. This is the view from my camera. Much better sound with my directional microphone. I went for blue on this one because that's what I had off a project. When we paint them red, this one's so well established. Most of the squirrels know to come to this area for a free feed. Doesn't need to get noticed. That's an inset from Bro's camera. She's tracking it. What's it going to do? Is it going to take some food? Or not? There we go. That's much better. done it this way because I've got no sniper cam. Not sure what happened from memory. I either forgot to press record or the battery had died. I'm sure I've got a few death batteries for that sniper cam. This one went out shot though. First one needed a follow up. That one didn't. That's why we got the body stoppers back up again. Best part of 18 foot pounds hitting that squirrel. Pretty happy with that shot. Looks like the mist's rolling in. Which isn't what I call ideal. Brove tipped me off as another squirrel coming from the right. Right on cue. As soon as I get the camera on. By the time I get the camera on even, it comes into view. I've got the sniper cam working again. I'm busily tracking this squirrel. It's gone on the right hand side. I screwed the ledges on after the event. I left it that way so I could vary the size easily if I wanted to. I think that works quite well. It's about three and a half to four inches wide from memory. I'll have to check it next time I go out there. Then we'll just clock the ones on the floor. Doesn't care though. That'll do. What's wrong with that shot? It sounded almost like a bullet gun going off. Strange what the old directional microphone will pick up. I'm quite enjoying the uprated sound so it's getting that. Thank you, Mr. Dave Ratz, for tipping me off on that front. I've never seen any of Dave's stuff. Tune in to his channel.
Here comes another one from the right yet again. Tail flicking away. Absolutely no idea what's going on. No idea where sat there either. I'm busy hitting everything if I can because I'm trying to pick the rifle up. Not on purpose, it's mainly because I'm clumsy. The squirrel hasn't heard it. Looks like he's looking for a hole in the back. You have a job getting through that, mate. It's armoured to death the back of that feeder. You are not going in. In any way, shape or form. Looks like he's voted with his feet and cleared off. That's annoying. We didn't exactly run away scared. I'm sure he'd be back another day. Hopefully one of us will be here to catch up with him. Probably likely to be bro. Check in the circle there. And there he goes. Gone for a bit of a forage. He's across the track. He's off into the woodland. Which really is an unfortunate end to the session. Got the three. It's the last one to hit. Plenty of blood. Rapid does take no prisoners. But as you see by the first shot, you've got to be on target despite the power. But I'll take the three. I'm more than happy with that. I've christened the new feeder. Thank you for watching. If you like this video, please like, subscribe, and share. Thank you.